Okay, let's begin. Uh, hello everyone, so hello. thanks for coming. Um, my name is Oton, I come from Croatian Live Koskice, it's written here. Uh, I'm sorry for not having really good voice, I'm, I'm still recovering from, from inflammation of the larynx, but I'll, I'll try to give my best. Uh, as you know, uh, we'll be talking about, uh, about LEGO in water and water in LEGO, LEGO aquatics. And let's begin with, when you say water, this is what we typically perceive as LEGO water. So plenty of, uh, plenty of trans clear and trans blue parts, uh, tiled over, over large areas, river, and it is quite, quite a good solution. Yeah, it looks nice, it has, it has its advantages. So, uh, Basically, it it looks quite good. It's it's rather steady. It survives uh, even air flights occasionally on weird occasions. It's pure Lego solution, but it has its also its its uh, its disadvantages. And as written, uh, you've got to order bags and bags of parts, and uh, which takes an ages to, to to build, and even longer if you, if you want to use them for something else, then uh, then your nails won't be very thankful to you. Uh, and they're all, they're, this method, this building technique has been already used for a long time. So it's, no one is really, uh, no one really notices if you use trans clear parts to make water, uh, water surface. So uh, the thing is, I started, I'm normally a technique builder, but I wanted to do something different for, as, as, a, as a break. And I started experimenting with real water. In this presentation I'll try to give a few hints and ways how to, how to deal with real water. Uh, it's not just uh, just you know, it's not only to make things uh, different, but uh, actually I found out that it's quite a good idea to use water, to use real water because it uh, draws the attention of, of the viewer. So, if, for example, if you are uh, presenting in an ex exhibition like this nice exhibition we have here this weekend, uh, if you're exhibiting something that, that you, has use of real water, it draws attention much more than just static. Part. So it's it's look both looks nice. It's fun to build, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it looks really good. Yeah. But uh, when dealing with real water, the Lego Group has already supplied one of its solutions. As I guess all of you know already, these boat hulls, actually both of these hulls, are buoyant. If you just place if you place them in water, they'll just gonna float. You can build at the top of them whatever you like. This is one of the official sets. Probably most of you have seen it at least. Uh, at least a few times, and uh, they're even, they have even quite good buoyancy, so uh, they can withstand a lot of uh, uh, they can withstand a lot of lot of mass placed on top. Uh, the decks can be filled, and uh, almost any type of ship, typical ship that one will build uh, uh, on top of these hulls, will float. It's not that heavy; it would, it would risk sinking. At least the compact hulls. There are of course the segmented hulls, which course won't won't be as buoyant, won't be buoyant at all at all. But the first thing you can do based on these uh, uh, on these hulls is actually motorize them. That's not that's something new, but uh, a while ago I did one of well, I did one experiment in building a, a catamaran style, so double twin hull boat, motorized boat in the Rhinic River Lake. Uh, it was powered by standard power function. Actually, nothing particularly fancy about it. It is obviously a prototype. It's it's ugly as hell. It's just lots of mechanics. But it did work. It was powered by twin propellers at the back. Each propeller was powered by, by its own motor, and both motors, of course, controlled by one standard power function <coughs> infrared receiver and powered with a, with a standard battery pack. And the thing is, this is not as difficult to build uh, uh, as, it, as it may seem, and it makes really a lot of fun. Uh, both to drive and to build. And one thing you may want to perhaps organize in your life is why not a small boat race you know, something like that. I was thinking of doing that one day, but it's perhaps an uh, idea worth pursuing because it's not, it's really, it's really not difficult to build. Uh, just a few things you have to keep in mind if you're going to build a motorized boat. Uh, the balance, as with real ships, the balance is important. So uh, basically, you have to be sure that the center of mass is really in the, uh, approximately in the geometrical center of the hull. But you can you can remedy you can, you can avoid this problem by just uh, by by building everything but leaving the battery pack, leaving the position of the battery pack undecided. And once when it's built, once when you build everything else, you can 
probably shift uh, uh, the battery pack a few, few studs forward and back just to find the optimal balance that you want. Uh, regarding steering of such boats, uh, it is possible, but it's quite picky and, and uh, uncomfortable. Something. It's simply unwieldy to, to build a real rudder, although it is possible. Uh, the better solution I've found, and most, most builders have used, is simply to have two propellers, one, uh, one beside the other, and both and have them independently controlled. One additional uh, advantage of that is that if, if you are running forward, so both, both uh, engines in full speed, uh, you actually have the power of, you use the power of both motors aboard instead of just one, if the other one is controlling the rudder. So uh, this, is, this is really good and, and it's even agile. I, I should say I've tried it a few times and, and uh, it, it's fun to control such boats. They're not much, of course they're not as agile as, 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 uh, as uh, out of the box toys that you buy in a toy shop for, for uh, kids. But it's really, but it's, but it's not at all to be underestimated. A uh, few things to keep in mind as well is uh, don't do the mistake that I did and I did a test drive on, on, a, on the lake on a nice sunny morning and the infrared receivers kept being very unreliable so uh, a few times I was already putting my shoes off to, to start swimming to, to catch it as it was, I was trying to, to, get, to, to get further from the, from the shore but try to have some Try to have some equipment ready for, for a car if it, if it starts uh, going away and you cannot control it anymore. I've, uh, even uh, built some kind of a, s a simple lasso which I was about to throw <laughs> over it and try to pull it back if it went too far away from the shore. But uh, on a, on a, in a simple swimming pool or, or in a closed area, it should actually work and be quite much fun. And uh, yeah, as, as mentioned I've, I've in, the, in this previous example, as I've shown, uh, I've used the double hull of, of an old police boat, but actually almost any type of hull uh, is, can be used, which is buoyant as such, because uh, uh, the, the amount of mass they can carry rather stable, stably is uh, pretty much enough to hold both the, the, the both motors and uh, the, the battery pack and extra electronics. And even if you build something for, for beauty on top, it should be able to hold it as well. So, that's much about motorized boats. But there is something else we can do. Underwater dioramas. Uh, this is an idea I've been exploring for a while before attempting to do it. I'm not the first one, of course, to do it, but uh, I'll try to share as much experience as I could about it. And uh, it's really a, it, it really draws attention. I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I think it was last year. I, no, it was year before. In, 20, in 2014. Oh, last year. Last year. Oh, thanks. Uh, last year we had one exhibition at the log where where, I, uh, where this was where this was displayed and actually grew through a lot of people. It's, it's under the uh, it, it looks a bit unusual, but it's not much more wiser than building this and then putting it in, a, in, a, in an aquarium. The aquarium is just a standard 56 liter aquarium. You can buy just about any any pet shop. It's nothing unusual. I mean, it's something you. A, a regular dinner for two will cost typically more than, than such an aquarium. And if you, if you want to buy a second hand, and there are a lot of them, you can go, go even much cheaper. So, building this is not difficult, just put it into, into, the, into the aquarium, and this is what you get. And the first few versions were, uh, uh, well, they did their job. But soon I learned there are some things I, I should have done better, and so I did a few versions. And here, here they are, in case you want to try the same thing. Uh, it is obvious, once when you build it and when you place everything in water, it is obvious. But up to, up until then, it wasn't obvious for me that when you put bricks one on top of the other, there is some air trapped in, in each of the bricks. But, you know, of course, if you're, if you're building with the studs pointing upwards, it's, it's difficult. There is some air trapped in each brick. And when you start putting it down, it won't go away. It has no vents. For the, for the air to get out. So, uh, al although uh, it is not a ship, it will still be very, very much buoyant. It, it will try to stay on the surface. And uh, there are a few ways to, to get around this problem. I think the easiest is to simply put some extra weights in a place where you don't see them. Otherwise, there, uh, uh, you can just uh, not build them completely, just uh, uh, leave a little bit space between the parts, but it's difficult to build like that, and it's not very sturdy. So, but you have to count with it. Although the plastic itself, the plastic from which LEGO is built, is, uh, does sink very slowly, 
but it does sink, it stays underwater. Uh, uh, if you build just a half, say a house, and fill it with water and put it in an aquarium, it won't sink because there is all this air trapped between the, between the, between the bricks. Uh, also, an important thing if you're building, say, a house, or in, as, as in this previous case, I've built a, a little submarine, uh, it's important to, to leave openings where, okay, it's public, the viewers won't see them, but leave the openings so when you're putting everything in the water, the, the, the air has some pretty, let's say, <coughs> large enough holes to escape and fill it with water. Otherwise, the, the entire operation of inserting and sinking your entire diorama in, into uh, an aquarium will last for two days until all small bubbles get out. So it's uh, usually, typically, two, two times, two holes is enough. But if you don't, if you forget about it, as I did in the first instance, it, it's, it, 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 it's quite horrible to, to sink it. An important also reason, for, for this very same reason, it's wise to sink everything sideways and then turn it, because sideways, Lego has more, Lego parts have more uh, uh, vents for the air to escape if you want everything to, to sink nicely, rather than just trying to submerge everything, everything vertically, and then, uh, especially if the air gets trapped in, in the base plates, you are pretty much, you, you, your hopes of having a good outcome are much lower. Uh, an important thing also, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, leave areas where you will hide the weights, so uh, you don't have to weigh too much. Uh, for in, for in this particular diorama that I've shown, a uh, uh, few parts of, I, I used the, the mechanical, mechanical keys used in, in mechanic sh car shops, which were hidden inside the, inside the various places, which were quite heavy, they're solid iron, and they were just enough, you don't have to put or billiard balls or something like that. Just small metal parts, well placed, are typically enough. Furthermore, uh, it doesn't seem obvious at, at first, but everyone who has an aquarium knows already it's important to have good, good lighting or something like that. So don't, do not rely, if, if you're going to exhibit your underwater drama in, in, in an aquarium on some, on some exhibition, do not rely on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the lighting of the, of the room to do the job. Because uh, it's it's really it gets really dark. It's very difficult to see any details. So try to provide some direct lighting. A table lamp, or even better, an aquarium lamp. If, if your, the aquarium already has one, will serve perfectly. But don't forget about it. Because otherwise, it will just seem like a very bland, bleak something, and people will actually have problem uh, seeing what's inside. Uh, about regarding mechanical tasks, there is an interesting. Uh, uh, advantage one can take of pneumatics. Of course, you cannot run motors underwater, although a little bit about one exception later, but you cannot run electronics and electronics and power functions underwater, but what you can do is use pneumatics. So if you have external external pneumatic pump, either controlled by, by power functions or just by hand, and leave the hoses inside the water, pneumatics Control from outside will still work underwater. So if you expand a, a, a if you try to force expand a, 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 a pneumatic cylinder underwater, it will still work. And nothing wrong will be about it. It will just work nicely. In fact, this little submarine I've shown, uh, this submarine rests. It's not visible from this point, but it actually rests on two on two uh, uh, pneumatic cylinders, which are controlled by these tubes, and it, it could. And it could uh, uh, rise from the surface and then sink back down, using by, by uh, expanding and, and compressing these, these uh, cylinders controlled from the outside. So it is possible to do some mechanical work, and if you can automate it, even better. And if, if the exhibition would last for more than, say, six or eight hours, I strongly suggest you to find a way to prevent algae. They collect, uh, they, once when they, they get roots, they, they start expanding extremely quickly and uh, within two or three days uh, it will look like a green slime and that's not a nice diorama. So there are, there are ways around it. If you already have an aquarium, you might have an expensive, a very efficient uh, 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 device that uh, filters the water and, and burns, burns everything living inside. And uh, there are also other ways, simply, simply to, to sink a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, biocides and, and uh, detergent and soap inside, which basically kills almost everything. But it's important to think about it. And as I mentioned, although you can use just about any type of transparent water containers, standard aquariums, are, at least mine, worked just well. And I've seen uh, uh, 
there, there are uh, models that should accommodate the nice 32 times 32 base plate. Well, also 48 base 48 should work. There are various sizes of aquarium you can take advantage of. The thing is, if you prevent the algae uh, uh, but with some natural means, then you can take everything one step further. This is one other experiment, and as you see, I've added some, well, some, some real plants to make it somehow more viable. These are real, other, real aquarium plants. This is a slightly different diorama, but it works. Covered it with, with, the, with the gravel, standard gravel used in the aquariums, and it, it looks, uh, and it was a rather good effect. And of course, the next step is the fish. <laughs> so, uh, my, uh, for a few months, uh, my aquarium fish had a the, the luxury and opportunity to live in their own castle, <laughs> whatever castle. I, did, I don't know whether they enjoyed it, but they seemed rather lively about it. But just one thing, if, you, if you're going to go that far and uh, uh, put, put your, uh, build an underwater diorama and have fish in it, one, one, uh, your fish will be thankful if you don't put many, many uh, sharp edges, for example, edges of, of uh, bricks, uh, which are exposed, because the fish apparently are not as, um, as used to I didn't believe that would happen, but actually my fish were, uh, after a while, most of my fish had streaks of, of uh, well, I, I don't know how to say wounds, perhaps, from, from uh, uh, striking <coughs> these sharp corners, so I, these, these had to be removed eventually, also some sharp corners I had to remove. So keep that in mind if you're going to have fish, at least if you're going to have uh, such dumb fish like I did. <laughs> Then the next thing, uh, perhaps simpler but also effective, is pumping water. There is not, Lego didn't provide anything specifically for pumping water, but actually pneumatics can be adapted for uh, pumping water. It is uh, uh, not a, it is not a standard usage for it, but I would say uh, the, the pneumatics are nothing more than, than uh, hydraulics working with air, or vice versa, actually. So uh, I've tried it, and uh, I've seen also someone uh, in the exhibition area has a, has actually a, a, a windmill powering a uh, powering a pump, water pump, and it works the same way. Uh, and it's actually quite simple. The, uh, you can you can just put, put a pneumatic pump in the water, and if you start pumping, it will really pump the water out. Uh, if you don't want to put everything in the water, then you can just take advantage of the old valve. I don't know whether. Everyone will be able to see, but this is an old valve which was used in pneumatics perhaps uh, 10, 15 years ago, and this is a standard standard cylinder, and this is output and input. If you just if you just open and close it like this, it sings along as well. Uh, then uh, it will just pump water. It will pump suck from one side and pump it out from the other. So to build some kind of a, I'm not sure, perhaps a water tank or a, or a, or a swimming pool in Lego scale, uh, it, it is enough to ju just do, uh, use something like this. As mentioned, go uh, uh, <coughs> go easy with the expectations because uh, it, it demands quite a lot of power to, to pump this all the time, and you don't want your motors to be to, to, to be dying after one hour. And uh, the fact is, if you if you use water, if you pump water with your pneumatics, then it will uh, eventually it will wash off the, the grease, which makes it run smoothly. So. After a while of uh, uh, usage underwater, you just have to regrade your pneumatics and it will be just like you know. And uh, so that's about, about it. The other way I've experimented, the other thing I've experimented with were water mills and uh, actually anything powered by water wheels. Now, here we have a few, so to speak, challenges. One is to build a, a waterproof, uh, water, uh, waterproof river bed and, and the channels. And of course, to build a, a, a water wheel. Water wheel itself is nothing, nothing, uh, nothing uh, special. Uh, this water mill actually works. It is, I don't know whether you can see it clearly enough, but there is a water supply hose at the top, and the water, uh, water goes uh, along this top, along this top channel, falls over the over the water wheel, and then by right, this river bed exits. Um, this is actually a power bottom, so it was not, it wasn't a big problem for them. A uh, few things you have to keep in mind if you're building. If, if you build it something, it's always not very good. Yeah, here you can see actually it, it, it's still frame frozen. Actually, water falls over the over the, uh, the water wheel and turns it around. So the thing is, 
There is no, at least I haven't found it, but that doesn't mean there isn't. But I, I haven't found yet a way to build something really, to, to build a, a water channel or, or, a, or a riverbed which is really watertight. So I had to resort to other technique. That is to build a, first build a, a riverbed which is slightly bigger, perhaps a, a stud or two wider and deeper than I wanted. Then cover it from inside with a kitchen foil, a standard usual transparent kitchen foil which you use to, to wrap your sandwiches when you go to work. It's actually, actually just work, works just nice. Cover it from the inside to make it waterproof, and then build another, on top of it, build another, this time a real waterbed. It looks pure enough because the foil, that way the foil isn't visible to the, to the, uh, to the viewers. And yet, uh, it is it is rather consistent. It, it is rather uh, reliably waterproof. And importantly, also in, in comparison to thicker foils, it, it is just soft enough to let the studs hold each other. So if you if you take a plate, if you take a, a, for, for example any kind of plate, wrap it in foil with one layer or two layers, and then put something on top of it, it will hold actually. It is thin enough for the for the bars to hold. So that way, you, exactly this that method was used for. For building this, for building this river, but it's not visible from here. But there is actually underneath it is a is a foil, and then yet below that foil is is the so is the, the master uh, uh, river bed. Few things to keep in mind. Uh, it, whatever you do, however you do, it will splash around. So if you want to exhibit something, if you exhibit it somewhere, you have to deal with it probably by, by uh, placing, uh, placing everything in some kind of a tray or container or putting it somewhere on an open space area where, where a floor, uh, a stone floor is underneath which won't mind being, being splashed. Think about where all that water will go, unless you have some kind of extremely sophisticated system which will return the water back up with some kind of under, under table pump. Think about mm -hmm. drainage, obviously. Uh, regarding water wheels, there are a few designs of water wheels. Okay. There are some that are powered by, mm -hmm. by the, just, that are just uh, placed atop, uh, just partly sunk into the river, and the river as it flows uh, uh, turns them. But this is, in, in Lego context, this is slightly too weak. So, the, the, whatever water power you've got, whatever normal flow you have, it will typically not, usually won't be enough to turn the water wheel. So it's better to do overshot wheel. So, so to speak, to, just as you've seen, let the water drop on the, on the, on the wings of the water wheel and, and turn it rather than just rely on it flowing and, and yeah. rotating the, the wheel. Make it as simple as possible and most important on the bottom. When I started building everything, I was already building castles in the sky. I was thinking, oh come on, this is going to do, to mill uh, to mill the, the to uh, I'm going to make a mill out of it, and it will perhaps generate electricity by connecting it to the power functions reverse. I was building castles in the sky. In in practice, you can do very little bit. Mechanical power of it is just sufficient. Typically, it's just just sufficient to let it turn. So the best you can do is perhaps connect it to some kind of a millstone inside of a mill and, and let the viewer see that it's rotating. But don't try to do anything useful with it, or otherwise you'll need gearboxes reduction one to a billion to, to actually <laughs> let something happen. All right, that much about, about that. And then uh, final problem, which I'm working on now. Uh, I think it's possible to do it, but... Uh, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Perhaps you, you might also want to, to take to, to, to have a try on it. And it's a pure Lego submarine, pure uh, made built from pure Lego. And uh, so far, I've I've done some, <laughs> so to speak, experiments. I'm not yet sure how how successful it is it going to be, but it's an interesting project. Uh, pure Lego submarine and remotely controlled, by the way. A few things about it. It has to obviously, if you want to pure light, it has to be controlled with, with infrared. And uh, clearly, uh, uh, well, few people, I've I already read that uh, uh, infrared doesn't pass very well through the water. But it turns out actually it's not that bad. I could, I could control with, with, when I submerge the, the, in, 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 inside a sealed bag and submerge uh, power functions into an aquarium, it was actually able to, I, I was able to control it. And now, the, the key thing is the, the electronics. You can't, obviously, you cannot play sink and direct in the water. So, the only pure solution I've came so far is to build everything, all the electronics, within a compact shift hull and then turn it upside down. 
this create when when the when the uh, submarine uh, submerges, that actually creates an air pocket underwater, similar to to, uh, to a cave or something like that, where where all the motors can keep working and dry. Here here it is actually. I don't know how much you will be able to see from here, but this is one of the examples. So here I've got the battery pack, the infrared, and two motors. And if this turns upside down, water is here and it sinks. The the air stays inside. And uh, you can control it then. Okay, you have to come from below, but uh, uh, it's less of a problem once you come with that. And as long as you don't swing this everything around so that the water enters, it actually is a pure lego solution to have electronics running underneath. Of course, these this, uh, axles, control axles, uh, sink into the water and they control other things. But uh, to have a but this is uh, so far this is the only solution I found. I'll keep working on it, but of course. If, uh, if anyone has uh, uh, comes up with a better idea, please let me know. Please let us all know. Uh, of course, this huge air pocket requires lots of uh, lots of counterweights to keep everything near the buoyancy of water because we don't need a submarine which is constantly floating. We don't need a ship which looks like a submarine. So uh, it has to be counted with lots of uh, weight parts. Fortunately, Lego well, Lego builds those. Uh, to, to keep everything, and it has to be almost exactly below below the air pocket to keep everything vertical because we don't want anything to we don't want anything to, to tilt sideways. As I said, side stability is so important. We don't want the water to enter this uh, to enter this this air pocket. Otherwise, we have a wreck and disaster. The, the another thing is uh, you you probably have to deal with only two outputs. So there are two motors and unless you want to, to have two, two air pockets, you have to deal with two outputs. So that's, that's another challenge how to control many things with two outputs. And yeah, you will need a lot of luck, that's the explanation for the last one, if you're going to, <laughs> going to deal with it, because it's, it's quite a messy thing to go with, so, so much work. This is the prototype, prototype I was building a while. Here you can see already what I've shown you with the extra gearboxes, because one gearbox, one motor would control the distribution gearbox, and the uh, other would, would be for the drive. And the distribution gearbox would, would, uh, would uh, swing one set of control services, so if it's in the other direction, it would control the other. So we had some kind of splitter and a ratchet and other kind of mechanical things, as you can see here in the tail. And uh, after a while, it came down to this is already assembled, right? and this, this is as it was ready for for his first maiden voyage. Um, I must say it wasn't a very successful one yet. It was, uh, it was so slow that I wasn't sure whether was it was moving because, I was, because my hands were in the water or because really it had its uh, propeller standing. But actually I think it is, it is a concept worth pursuing. If you're going to, to attempt the same, please let me know. It, it is an I hope that within the end of the year uh, I'll have some well, so to speak, some more, uh, uh, some better result than just hell letting it sink in the water. But, but the concept works. It really sunk in the water, and it really stayed in the water, and the motors work. So at least we know that's possible. Pure labor. We're going to see what's in the future. And uh, that will be about it. And are there any questions before? Can you control the depth of the submarine? Sorry? Can you control the depth of the submarine? Depth? Yeah. Profundity. Uh huh. It, it, uh, it sank about twenty centimeters. I, I didn't. I didn't have the courage to let it sink further. <laughs> it, was, it, was in, it was in my bathtub, and uh, <laughs> I, I was I was dressed. I didn't want to really get into the water. This was more like a proof of concept, to, to, to be honest. It it showed that the things think think can work, but uh, it will probably require a lot, quite a lot of more of engineering until it really the performance stuck into into this uh, uh, inverted boat hull. Is sufficient to really let it be called the, the autonomous Lego submarine. Pure Lego submarine. What about your displays when you um, get them out of the aquarium? Do you have to um, put everything apart to dry the elements? Or yes, how, how... yes, yes. Uh, the point is actually, a uh, very good question, no? but I can. Uh, the point is, when, 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 the, when the submarine is pulled out of the water for service and repairs, as it has to every 10 minutes, uh, typically this the boat hull is dry inside, of course wet from the outside, and uh, that's why it's actually built so that it can allow the, the, the stop part, this, this electronics 
uh, housing part to be taken out and dried separately because we don't want this to get to get uh, uh, to ever get to, to ever get wet. The other things I simply put on a, on, a, on a towel and wait for for some time. Actually, if, if they are a little bit wet when uh, uh, when when submerging again, it's not a problem. It's a problem if I want to build something new at that point because working with wet parts is not really not really comfortable. But yeah, it's, it's one one more thing to, to think about how to disassemble it easily without re risking all the water dripping to with dripping to, into these uh, crevices and and, and uh, holes. Yes. Have you had any issues with pneumatic parts rusting or any problems like that? Uh, I've actually used the old pneumatics, which had the which had a lot of plastic parts for that very reason. From a colleague, I've heard that they had some. Uh, uh, they were occasionally they had some problems with uh, mm -hmm. with the with, with rusting. But uh, if you if you occasionally take these pneumatics out and just polish them with uh, with a good grease. Uh, I found out it actually, although it doesn't look as shiny anymore, it still works rather well. Just regarding the, the limit here of the, the water plants, they are affected by the issue mounted in the water. For the old one, indeed, they, are, they can be erased. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, uh, some parts I found out that uh, uh, do lose their same quality when you want to. I'll just show you. Perhaps you can see the parts are actually metalized as crystals. And I cannot jump this high, but probably you can see that on this crystal, <laughs> try, it's try. already started rusting. And this metallic, uh, this galvanized parts actually do lose some of their kind. But I didn't notice any of the prints on, on the bricks to lose, to, lose their, uh, uh, to lose their labels over time. Actually, it seems to be quite resi resilient to water. Uh, when you removed uh, the, sharp, uh, the sharp parts that were scratching the fish, did the fish disturb any other part of the mock? If something was broken or no, no, no. They, they, no, they actually disturb. They're, they're very hydrodynamic, and uh, they disturb the water very little. Actually, even when they were chasing each other around, I, didn't, I never noticed uh, that they that they, uh, that they uh, uh, broke or, or changed anything. Uh, we have to keep in mind, uh, for example, force by which these these uh, crystals are attached to to the stud is almost negligible for us. But for a fish, which is which whose largest muscle is is a uh, uh, one time build, one millimeter long, it's an almost impossible task. Only dogs like eat. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they leave it at the places where you step on in the night. Right. Yes? Do you have any kind of solution for uh, another kind of tools like uh, the pirate tools, the chips? Chips, the pirate chips. Uh, I've, I've tried with a couple of holes. Uh, I've, I've stuck with this one because actually it's just large enough to house everything I need. If I use the larger one, I could perhaps fit more things, but uh, then my counterweight, which, which counters all this buoyancy and, and uh, curved by but this large hole, would be even larger. So the submarine would have to be even larger than that, and that would mean it would be even heavier, and then even more reinforced, and then it would soon uh, expand to, to something too large. Perhaps I will have to do it in the future, but I wanted to go simple. That's why I stuck with this. Uh, with this uh, hull, but certainly if one wanted to use two battery packs and perhaps four motors, two IRs, then probably large, something like Pirate or, or, or these catamaran hulls I've shown earlier would be a way to go. Yes? Uh, uh, I don't think that was the question, but my question is about how can you float a Pirate hull, a Lego Pirate hull? Is there any solution that you know of? Because I've tried several times, they all sink. Uh -huh, the, the, no, no, uh, not all hulls. Not all hulls can. can uh, this one is compact, and if you yes. place it in the water, it obviously it, it's obviously closed because water has no, no way to yes. get in. But no, I don't know of any uh, of any hulls that have holes. To, at least not a pure Lego way to, to make them to make okay. them float. Unfortunately, yeah. not all hulls are, are suitable for this type of job. Only these that are really watertight. Yes. Uh, obviously, that would mean that the, that the uh, submarine would be bigger, but if you use two holes, if you double that, the one you have, wouldn't that also massively reduce your problem with balance? Possibly, yes, but it would also increase my problems with the size and the size Weight of the and buoyancy, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, I wanted to go simple at the, the beginning, uh, just to, to prove as a concept. And this conference came a bit too early for me to have <laughs> more to show. But I still didn't. I don't want to be the guy who, who just uh, works for years in his lab secretly and then only reveals everything when it's over. I wanted to share the ideas. Perhaps you have some. Perhaps someone who can even see light where I saw the scene. Every toy is chattering with the submarine before using the afterwards. Uh, yes, it's a proof of concept idea. I wanted to see whether it all works well, but uh, it didn't actually help much because the, the mass that the electronics uh, bring with them, the power pack, the, the battery pack particularly, changes the balance so much that actually you, you cannot test it properly before you really, uh, before you really try the real weight and real distribution of it. But uh, uh, yeah, in, in theory, uh, it's, uh, pneumatics should work. So, for example, if you've got uh, several pumps, manually operated pumps uh, from outside the water and get the hoses inside to control some, it should work, yes. And then you don't even have to uh, worry about the air pockets and such things. But then it's not completely remote anymore, you've got the hoses. That's it then? Or a different It's 25, I'd say about 25 centimeters, but it still works. I didn't test much further because uh, my bathtub is on my desk. Where do you have the things inside? Here, yes. The, the problem is, yeah, you've noticed that correctly. If I, when I build the entire submarine below, then actually it's somewhat obscured by the, by the mechanics. But still not that obscure that the experiment would work. Do you have experience using s -brick for the Bluetooth remote control thing? Uh, I know, yeah, I've received s -brick recently, but uh, uh, for this project I resorted to have, having pure LIGO, so s -brick was out of the game. But perhaps I will try it. I'm not sure whether... Bluetooth should not work, actually, I think as well. Uh, I should try it, but uh, as far as I understand, the, the, the tap water is quite a lot for the electromagnetic. Yeah, I think so. Do you consider it for a watch uh, some uh, a mind store and using sound instead of instead of infrared? Uh, yes, yes. Perhaps if, if if this grows up to something rather large and, and operable, then I would use mind store. But but still uh, I want to be sure that I can do everything with power functions before I resort to some. Yes, but stuff. my question is sound operates uh, very well. Ah, solar control. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing of that. Because there's a low frequency sound and a high frequency sound to communicate the mind story. Oh, that's, that's a clever idea, sir. That's a clever idea. I didn't know how to do that. But perhaps, uh, yeah, perhaps that should be tried. Although I didn't yet, uh, I, I didn't yet have, we don't want to an experimental phase. I didn't want to risk. Uh, ruining, ruining my EV3 smartphone. <laughs> yes. And how about to avoid to um, to use holes, uh, making a, a sort of container with uh, plates and bricks with uh, the uh, film, as you said. Uh... Yeah, but that's not pure LIGO anymore. Ah, okay. <laughs> if, if we go beyond the pure LIGO, yeah. then the problem is already solved. There is okay. a Swiss guy. Polybags. <laughs> Polybags. Uh -huh. Who who are all the is there? You can put this other way. Huh? Well, it's sort of gray. It's sort of gray. But if I had to do it, but uh, I, I was thinking, would Lego approve that or not? <laughs> uh, but yeah, if we if we go just slightly beyond the like what Lego offers, then it's actually not a difficult problem anymore. If we can just take advantage of uh, of uh, some water. Of some of some uh, uh, waterproof containers, and there are, there are other methods. There is one I have seen who used a completely water uh, uh, waterproof sealed container and placed the motors that rotated uh, the tree stars with magnets. And they're also fitting counter magnets on the other side, making of course with reverse poles that rotated the, the things uh, uh, from outside. So without any mechanical without any mechanical link. So very clever solution. <coughs> Unfortunately, this this watertight container makes it uh, non pure. <laughs> yes? Have you tried using the Lego pneumatic air reservoirs, the tanks, to contain water and then you can pump that, sorry, to contain air 
you can then pump that air into your reservoir. So pump it from the compressor tanks huh? out into the actual pipe pod to actually control your buoyancy. Uh, no, I haven't yet. I was uh, because I don't have one yet. But uh, uh, I was actually was considering doing it with with with, uh, with, uh, with standard cylinders, which I would which would pump the, the water in or out. But uh, that, that's something that would I would I'll have to control once when the basic maneuverability is ready. So I, I think boy, controlling buoyancy is extremely difficult thing because you have to uh, because it's not just pumping some water somewhere. You have to know where you're pumping the water because otherwise you might uh, disturb the balance. Yeah, what, what I was thinking was pumping air into the into the upside down reservoir in the boat. So mm -hmm. having the air contained and pump that in so that the water just displaces and flows out underneath. Uh, that might, that might work, yes. Uh, right, you, you, then one only has uh, sufficient air probably for one. For one. Yes. Yeah, but, yeah, but still, uh, it should work, yeah. Didn't, didn't try it yet, but in theory, at least it should work. Yeah. You'll have to do another talk where you manage to get Mindstorm solar control. And <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully in a couple of years, I'll, 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 bring, I'll bring a large bathtub here and just show it. We well. fill all this with water and dive Yeah, yeah, you, you'll yeah. get goggles in the end. <laughs> And the snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 3D underwater So it's Lego underwater. underwater. Oh. Okay then, guys. Is there no more questions? I'll thank you for your time. Good, good for <laughs>